ancient Egypt has long been described as one of the greatest civilizations of all time. The Sphinx, Pyramids of Giza, and countless more treasures still to be unearthed. The River Nile has a history as long as its body, but we'll get into that later. Here in the heart of ancient Egypt, what we know about the civilization is largely from what has been left behind. Artifacts reveal the Egyptians had a diverse belief system, its own language, and a complex hierarchical and political structure. But there are some questions with divided answers, namely that of the ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians. Africans, sure, but were they black? Sheikh Anta Diop was a Senegalese historian and anthropologist. He was a firm believer that the ancient Egyptians were in fact black. According to his research, the skulls of ancient Egyptians had physical features resembling the peoples of the Upper Nile region, East Africans and Nubians, all visibly black populations. But his theories aren't shared by all experts on the matter. We spoke to Dr. Zahi Hawass, an award-winning, world-renowned archaeologist. His life's work has been dedicated to the discovery and research of ancient Egyptian antiquities. Not surprisingly, his office is full of books on the topic, some of which depict dark-skinned ancient Egyptians. But he says there's an explanation. No, they were dark-skinned, but, but they, they were not, not black. But they are not negro. Mm. Because look at the, the, the length of the, the Negroes like that and the nose like this. It's not really in the Egyptian uh, origin at all. It's mm. different, completely different. Mm. And this is why we have, you cannot connect the Egyptian civilization with the African at all. It's different. Uh, or from Celebrus time, Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. it's different, completely. Sheikh Ante Diop is from uh, Singal. And he announced it that the origin of the Egyptian were Negro, mm -hmm. based on the statues of Ramses II and the statues of, uh, of Tutankhamun were, was black. And actually UNESCO did make a conference to discuss that. And they said there is no evidence, we have to postpone this. Another group, Diop's research, claims to justify a black identity in ancient Egypt were the Kushites of Kush Kingdom. Originating in what is today Sudan, the kingdom began in 1070 BC and lasted some 1,400 years. It was after King Kushta invaded Egypt in the 8th century BC, Kushite kings ruled the 25th dynasty of Egypt as pharaohs for a century. But what race were the Egyptians the Kushites met when they got there? It's true that the black from Kush ruled Egypt in Dynasty 25. Right. And this is what the black Americans are proud of. Yes. But they mix the 25th dynasty with the old kingdom and the new kingdom. They don't know the difference. Then they think that Egypt is a black civilization. It's not true. The black from Kush in the south ruled Egypt. It's a fact. Yes. But it's not the Egyptian civilization. It's not a Negro uh, civilization. Other theory that I believe in it that the Egyptians were Egyptians. With arguments for and against ancient Egyptian blackness, we decided to take our own journey to the past. It began at the Egyptian Museum of Antiquities, otherwise known as the Museum of Cairo. It's home to many gracious artifacts, telling many stories of ancient Egypt's history, and we're hoping to find some answers. Inside the museum, we take a closer look at the place housing more than 100,000 pieces of history. Here we stand in front of a statue of Akhenaten. The pharaoh ruled during the 18th dynasty of Egypt and was husband to Queen Nefertiti and father of the famous boy king Tutankhamun. In front of the statue, our tour guide lends her opinion on the debate of race. We are African, we are black. Further to her point, she shows us the bust of Hatshepsut, the woman king who also ruled during the 18th dynasty. She's one of only two women believed to have been pharaohs in ancient Egypt. Well, just behind me, we have the statue of Queen Hatshepsut. And automatically, you can see the strength of her features, her nose, her mouth, but obviously the dark color of her beautiful skin. Queen Hatshepsut was the daughter of Tutmosis I, the wife of Tutmosis II, and the stepmother of Tutmosis III. Just outside Cairo, we reach the Pyramids of Giza. 
one of the seven wonders of the world and part of one of the seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites here in Egypt. The pyramids were tombs filled with jewelry, perfumes and other valuables for the pharaohs who were expected to use them when they became gods in the afterlife. Close by is the Sphinx. The statue depicts a mythical creature with a human head and the body of a lion, which stretches 240 feet long and reaches 66 feet high. The marvel reignites our questions about race. The noses on the statues of many ancient Egyptian pharaohs, as well as the Sphinx, have been destroyed. Claims lay blame for that destruction at the feet of European colonists who felt the noses represented black faces. But other experts say the defaced statues were a result of iconoclastic attacks intended to deactivate the life believed to be within them, motivated by politics and spirituality, not racism. Geography also plays a key role in the ethnically diverse populations of Egypt. The second theory that many people thought that the origin of the Egyptian were from Africa and at the East uh, Asia, S uh, area of Syria, Palestine and, and Mesopotamia. Then, based on what? They said that the uh, Arabic language now, the grammar is the same like the hieroglyphic. Mm. And also the people from the East of Syria, Palestine, their faces lie, light. The, the, like the people in the Delta. The people in Upper Egypt, they are dark, African. And the African languages also has origin of the hieroglyphic grammar, the same. The Nile Delta, where the river empties into the Mediterranean Sea, saw the coming of Europeans, like Alexander the Great of Greece in 332 BC, who laid claim to Egypt's third largest city, naming it after himself, Alexandria. To the east are the populations in what is now Syria and Palestine and reach as far as Turkey. And then there's the undeniable presence of sub-Saharan Africa and the black populations therein. So Egypt, therefore, is a melting pot of history, culture, language and race, united by one collective identity, African. Adifemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Cairo.